just in Gaza where Palestinians are getting bombed, killed, oppressed, facing siege, blockade, occupation, oppression in every sense of the world. Palestinians in every single inch of Palestine, whether they are even citizens of the Zionist state, whether they live in the West Bank, whether they are in the South, Palestinians in every corner of Palestine are oppressed by Israeli settler colonization. And this is why we have to have this emergency protest today on top of the constant mobilizations we were, happen we were having. Because two days ago, the genocidal Zionist entity murdered at least six Palestinians in an airstrike on Tul Kareh. More are injured. And we know that many Palestinians die of their injuries because of Israeli refusal to allow them to have adequate medical care. Just the other day, 80 bodies were returned with organs missing. But after this airstrike in Tul Karim, after an hour long raid, the head of the Tul Karim doctor syndicate said that one of the injured could have lived, but he was stabbed to death in an ambulance by an Israeli soldier. And that some of the other Palestinians that were killed, when they arrived to the hospital from the injuries that they received from the airstrike, they were executed on sight by the Israeli occupation forces. As the U.S. backed and funded military continues its attempt to commit a genocide and ethnically cleanse Gaza for over 85 days, its occupation forces are working violently to extend the annihilation campaign to all of Palestine. Since before October 7th, Israel has raided, bombed Palestinians and Palestinian refugee camps all across the West Bank, including Janine and Nablus. They have murdered over 25,000 Palestinians in Gaza and over 500 Palestinians in the West Bank this year alone. We're reminded in every statement and every action taken by Israel and its representatives since October 7th and well before that that the project of Zionism is one of settler colonialism with clear intent to annihilate all Palestinian life and history. This is the project that our taxes fund. This is what we struggle against and what we have resisted for over 75 years. But it's not just Zionism, it's not just Israel we call out. We are calling out its supporters, its facilitators. This is why as people who live in the United States of America, the imperialist belly of the beast, especially in cities like New York City, near places where we stand, like Wall Street. Without U.S. backing, without U.S. support, politically, financially, in the media, and in so many other ways, the Palestinian resistance would have defeated Israel a long time ago. that's waging a genocide against the Palestinian people. It's this country, the United States, that set the weapons manufactured by U.S. companies, paid for by our tax dollars, my and your tax dollars, that have killed upwards of 10,000 Palestinian children in Gaza this year. And it's the cooperation of every normalizing government. I'm not just against Israel and the United States for them killing my people. I'm against every so-called Arab and, and so-called Muslim country that is aiding and abetting this genocide. Every single entity that tries to normalize relations with 
Israel that is having parties and celebrations with Zionists while Palestinian children get slaughtered. And that includes places like Egypt, places where the Rafah border stands, where Palestinians are not able to get through because Israel could not maintain the siege and blockade on the people of Gaza if it wasn't for the cooperation of the Egyptian government. But they do not represent us. They don't represent the Egyptian people. They don't represent the Muslims, the Arabs, the people of all oppressed nationalities, of all backgrounds, of all religions, of all races around the world who stand with the Palestinian liberation struggle. introduce you all to an organization called Egyptian Diaspora Resists and they are here to share a few words from the people, from the people who are actually resisting this genocide and how they are holding their government accountable in this moment just like we should be holding our government accountable and all governments of the world accountable for this horrific genocide. I'm sure we all know that every time an action for Palestine occurs, we as Egyptians show up with full support from the bottom of our hearts. But we have yet, we have yet to reckon with the Egyptian state's role in this horrific genocide. As more and more Egyptians have had to flee Sisi's military dictatorship since 2014, an increasing network of us in the diaspora have found it imperative to speak out not only about our government's tyrannical oppression of our people, but also about its disgraceful collaboration with the State of Israel in its normalization efforts and the siege of Gaza. As Egyptians in the diaspora, we have the relative privilege of using our voice, whereas millions of Egyptians in Egypt and the thousands languishing in prisons cannot. By standing here today, we are lending our voices to those who are not able to express their unwavering support for Palestinian liberation. We understand that Egypt's stance must be situated within the historical context, which goes back to Camp David Accords of 1978 under Anwar Sadat. The Egyptian state under different regimes and to varying degrees has worked overtime to try to condition the Egyptian people's normalization with the existence of the state of Israel. But we will never accept that. We have not forgotten that Israel has perpetrated many assaults on Egypt. We remember the 1967 war. We know our histories. We know how Israel massacred dozens of Egyptians uh, prisoner of, uh, prisoners of war in the infamous Ross Sidra massacre in June of 67. We know about the infamous Bahra Ba'ar massacre in 1970 when they bombed a school, a primary school filled with children in south of Bursaid. But we stand here today as a network of Egyptian organizers here and in Europe to say that we refuse to stand by as we watch Palestinians in Gaza experience humiliation, harassment, and bribery at the hands of the Egyptian military. I'm sure that many of us Egyptians here have had to have annoying conversations with relative, relatives, friends, and others about the fact that Egypt is doing all that it can when it comes to Gaza. But we know that that's a blatant lie. Just days ago, the Health Ministry of Gaza reported that over 9,000 Palestinians have died just as a result of not being able to enter Egypt to receive critical care. That is a shame. The Egyptian government is a target. Now, now more than ever, the response of the Egyptian government to the latest Israeli demand of letting up control of the Egyptian side of the Rafah border with Gaza is critical for various reasons. This is not to say that Egypt is a world power or in a position similar to Western governments who are actively committing the genocide. But we as the Egyptian diaspora are heeding the call 
lives of our brothers and sisters in Gaza who have since October 7th been relentlessly demanding the opening of Rafah as Israel maintains a full blockade of the air, sea, and land of Gaza, Rafah is the only lifeline available to Palestinians in Gaza. We should all be asking ourselves if the Egyptian government is doing all that it can, then why are thousands of Palestinians with dual citizenship with Egypt being denied entry into Egypt? Why are Palestinians suffering from critical wounds being denied entry? Why are Palestinians being asked to pay sums of $5,000 per individual just to be allowed entry into Egypt? And the last point that must be made is that this cannot be conflated with an ask to mass displace Palestinians into Sinai. The Palestinians in Gaza want to return to their cherished homeland and they will return. If we do not let them in, then we are sentencing them to their deaths. We know resistance and supporting resistance is an act of love. We know we can stop the Zionist regime in its tracks and we will. And we know revolution will find us again in Egypt, along with the free Palestine. But we must, we must fight to make it happen by throwing a cog in every wheel of the machine and we will. So, yeah, just re repeat after me. Say it loud, say it clear. We don't want no blockade here. Say it loud, say it clear. We don't want no blockade here. Say it loud, say it clear. We don't want no blockade here. As y'all can see, just like the U.S. government does not represent the people living in this country who've been rising up and having protests for Palestine time and time and time again all over this country the egyptian government does not represent the egyptian people who stand